This mini-lecture discusses uh, numerical integration and how it can be used to solve problems like the ones we'll encounter in this class. So in this class, we'll focus on linear time invariant systems because those are the systems for which we have analytical solutions. We can define natural frequencies and damping and mode shapes that will be really useful um, as we experimentally try to understand the systems. But not all systems are linear, and you'll see that even in Lab 1. So it's important to know what we can do when we have a nonlinear system. Well, fortunately, there's a general approach called numerical integration that can deal with just about any system, linear, nonlinear, time varying, almost anything we can imagine. <laughs> and um, there are algorithms in MATLAB that can solve the system, and it has to have this general form that you see right here, where we have um, a derivative is some function of a state. So the derivative of the state is some function of the state. <laughs> and um, the simplest example we could do of this, if I can get the slides to advance, <laughs> is um, just a particle flowing freely in the air with linear drag. So if we had a particle in the air moving along, um, and we use f equals ma, we could write an equation that says that the drag force and again, assuming linear drag, we just have some constant times the velocity, is equal to mass times acceleration. <laughs> and then if we let our state be, e um, be the velocity, then um, this has the form x dot equals f of x, and uh, we can solve this. And the basic idea behind integ numerical integration is that if we know, say, that the initial velocity is 2, then at that instant, um, the drag or the driv the drag or the acceleration will be negative c times 2 so we'll have some deceleration of the particle we just project forward with a constant deceleration until we get to some instant later in time and then now we have a new velocity for the system now we can update um, f of x we can calculate a new drag and so on until we've solved the equation so this is known as an Euler integration algorithm. And what MATLAB uses, um, OD45, is a more advanced version of this. And it also has an automatic time step feature, where it automatically determines the time step to use. It's not perfect, but it works really well for a lot of the systems we want to deal with. So how do we do that for our structural dynamic systems? Well, our systems, we write the equations in this form. And um, there Incidentally, there are ways of solving this equation without doing the transformation, algorithms that are derived specifically for second-order differential equations. But they're less common, and we won't learn about them now, although they really are the workhorse in finite element software, if you ever use that. So let's talk about how to do it in MATLAB, though. All we have to do is we define a state vector. Since this is a second-order system, we can write it as a set of two first-order differential equations. So we define a state vector that's the displacement over the velocity. And we notice that if we solve this for acceleration, then uh, we can write it like this. And notice if we took the derivative of the state, the bottom part is the acceleration. Now we also need to get the top part, though. And to do that, we just note that the derivative here would be q dot, and we can just use the identity, q dot equals q dot, because q dot is one of the states. So we end up with this equation of motion, where um, the top again is just the identity, and this bottom part is our equation of motion. And here we've done it for a linear system, but we can put any equation of motion down in here pretty easily. And you can do this for a multi-degree of freedom system, too. Okay, so what can this do? Well, first I'll show you, um, maybe out on the lunatic fringe, some of the craziest, most complicated systems that, that one could imagine dealing with here. These are um, some simulations that were done by the um, Simulations-Based Engineering Lab here at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Here they tackle hugely um, complicated systems with many, many particles. So here's an example of impact of a um, particle into a granular material. You, this could be a weapons application or lots of other applications. Here they've modeled all of these little balls um, using Newton's laws, F equals MA. And they're also modeling contact with between the balls, which is one of the most difficult things to do. 
And um, they're s using time integration to step through time and simulate how the motion evolves. Um, let's see, here's another good example. Um, a pretty extreme example here. Um, again, there's millions of particles and then one large particle with a different density. And you can see that as the box is shaking back and forth, these particles behave like a fluid. And um, again, all of this is done, just treating each one of those particles uh, with F equals MA, accounting for contact forces between them, and then um, solving for the response. Uh, one other interesting one here is um, the Mars rover. Now notice here, um, here you'll see the Mars rover, what they'll do is they'll initially drop the rover and the particles to get everything settled and then the rover immediately starts driving. It's only two seconds long. And there's a good reason that it's only two seconds long. These simulations, um, even with the tricks that they've developed and the supercomputers, these are incredibly expensive to count, account for eight million degrees of freedom and contact between all of them is, is really, really challenging. So uh, with this many particles, you can only advance the simulation just a few seconds of physical time in maybe weeks of computation. Here they reduce the number of particles a little bit, and you'll see that this one will run a little longer, five or six seconds. And uh, okay, so these are extreme examples of what you could do with numerical integration. I could show you dozens of other things on the web of um, um, dozens of other simulations in finite elements. This is used all the time in finite elements, but the, but the point is that it's very expensive, so we only use it when we absolutely have to, and usually we can only use it for a short time because the calculations take a really long time. I mean, on the order of hours, weeks, maybe. Okay, so now let's look at an example in MATLAB. Let's use MATLAB to solve a single degree of freedom system, like the equation we have right here, and we'll use these parameters, and then to solve it, we also need to give it a specific initial condition. The solution we get in MATLAB is just a solution to one set of initial conditions. We, at OD45, can't calculate a general symbolic solution. So, um, what we'll do is we'll switch to MATLAB here. And um, I have an M file already prepared that'll be on the course website. And here, I'll define the initial conditions, and I'll make a state vector, an initial state vector, which just stacks those. And to call ODE45 is really simple. It's just this one line. Now I've also added some timing here, just for fun. So to call it, I tell it where, where the function is that contains f of x and t. Um, so ODE45 is expecting that the equation of motion is x dot equals f of x and t, and so this is the function that contains f of x and t. And then I tell it the time interval over which to integrate, so start at time 0 to time 50 seconds, and the initial state. And when I get done, um, I will get out the state vector at every instant in time, so if I want the displacement, I just take the first column of that. Okay, so let's try this. And down here, I'll solve the same equation analytically, and we'll compare the solutions. So I hit go, it took um, only 60 milliseconds, so it didn't take very long at all to find the response of this system. And you can see the red circles and the red dots and the blue circles agree really well. The analytical solution works great. Okay, so next let's look at, um, let's look at solving a more complicated system. I'll put a derivation here towards the end, but um, let's look at solving a single degree of freedom system um, with nonlinear damping. Oh, first I forgot to show you the function, the equation of motion function. You can look at this later. Basically, this is a function of um, t and x that gives back x dot. So this, um, so if you look at the slides, the, the first element in x dot is just the velocity. And the second element is um, k over m times the displacement minus c over m times the velocity. And if we had a forcing function, we could just add that in right here. Okay, so now let's try a case with nonlinear damping. Again, I've derived this equation 
um, at the end here. And um, again, I plug in the equation. Now this is nonlinear because I'm taking the sign, um, positive or negative, of the velocity, not the velocity. So that's a stepwise nonlinearity, one of the tricky kinds of nonlinearities to deal with. And I'll turn off the analytical solution so we don't run into trouble. And we'll try running this. And as you're debugging, if you run into trouble, one thing you might f try is cutting the time down over which you integrate. Um, if we try to integrate, uh, this will be a lot slower, and if we try to integrate too long, this might fail. So, um, so for example, let's try that. Let's see if we can go out 200 seconds and see the response decay a little longer. I'm running it again. MATLAB is thinking. The last one only took a fraction of a second. Let's see how long this takes. And it's still thinking and still thinking. So something must be wrong. It shouldn't take that long. So I'm going to hit Control C and kill it. Let's try going only to 100 seconds. Okay, and that worked. And actually, yeah, if you project forward, it looks like the mass might come to rest if we go more than, say, 150 seconds or so. And if the mass comes to rest, we can encounter a singularity and MATLAB can't solve it anymore. So yeah, so we probably can't integrate this more than about 150 seconds. Okay, so there's the examples. All of this will be posted on the web.